Hi guys. I almost forgot that I was supposed to film this for you. We got some rhubarb this morning, delivered specially from my father from my parents' backyard. Ahyan got a bunch and I have a bunch. We're gonna make some snick snacks. Snick snacks? She calls them snick snacks for you guys. For us, I think. Just for us. Uh, <laughs> before I forget, we're doing a strawberry rhubarb crumble. I have some strawberries here that I've cut up. I'm going to get the rhubarb next. I still need to wash it and cut it. I'm not gonna show you that process because I can't wash and hold the camera at the same time. So bear with me and I'll be back in just a couple minutes. So this might actually be more than I need, but we'll see how much I can cut up and put in the dish. Uh, yeah. Is that a good shot? Uh, yeah, so I, I say so and um, uh, quite a bit. I'm sorry, you deal with it. I'm still getting used to the talking to people thing. And think about the thoughts so that it actually makes sense. So, okay, turns out it was the exact amount that I wanted to have in there. I'm gonna mix a little bit of sugar in here and then I'm gonna mix the uh, crumble part at the top. I've decided that I was gonna use some, not Splenda, some Stevia for this. I don't want to increase the sugar for no reason. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to sprinkle some of that and mix it up a little bit. The crumble part on top is one part each. Flour, brown sugar, rolled oats in my case. The flour and the rolled oats are certified gluten-free so that I don't die while eating this or after eating this. Bad lighting. So we have our one third from third, one third, maybe, I guess, is the way to say it. I'm gonna mix this up and I'm gonna melt some butter. Butter's actually in the microwave melting right now. It's gonna go inside here. Everything in here has been mixed. I'm going to take a little bit of the mixture. I'm gonna put a little bit of it here and then I'm gonna mix this. And the reason I'm gonna do this now is because I want the fruit to kind of have a little bit of thickness to them, not just juice. The flour is going to have it, I don't know if coagulated is the right word, I don't think it is, but it's going to have a more syrupy feel to the, the fruit at the bottom of the, the crumble here. Up next, melted butter into the remainder of our dry ingredients. I usually go fairly heavy with my butter here because I want the crust to be really crispy. I know that my mother prefers to have a more crumbly, fall apart texture on the top of her crumble. I like it to be more like a crust than flour, personally. So I'm gonna let go of the camera so that I can actually spatula this out properly and get all the butter in there. And once I'm done that, I'm gonna top this on top of the fruit. Okay, it's all in, guys. This is the texture that we're looking for. You'll see the butter kind of coated everything and made these little crumbly bits. Almost like granola, but buttery granola. Yeah. I'm gonna spread that out on top. I'm trying to not get my shadow in there. It's kind of hard. I'm gonna top it up a little bit so that it gets more dense. You don't want to smush it too much, but I kind of want it to hold together, not just fall apart when I cut this up for breakfast. Because yes, I'm absolutely having that for breakfast. It's oatmeal and fruit, guys. All right, there we go. The next part is to put it in the oven. I have the oven on at 350. It's gonna go in there for 20 minutes and then I'm gonna look at it and see if the fruit have dropped in volume considerably or enough to my liking to check on the crust to make sure that it's one, not burning, although I doubt it at that temperature for that long. It turns a nice golden crisp on top. I'll see you guys in the next 20 to 30 minutes. Since we last spoke, I have walked the dog because he's getting antsy. He's had a long day also. I have finished baking the custard, the custard, the fuck am I saying? The custard, the, the like custard, the crumble is finally out of the oven. Looks like this, beautiful. Let me see if I can. We've got a nice reduction of the fruits here. I expect it to be tart still. I think it's gonna be amazing. We'll let you know how that tastes tomorrow. The baby hairs for crying out loud. Okay, the hair. <laughs> the hair needs to get done. We had some really 
emotional moments tonight after seeing the reactions that some of our treats have brought to the hearts of little kids and the big kids. We bake because of those moments. We cook because of those moments. There's not a better way to share with other human beings, I think, than through food. The reason this makes us so happy I can't speak for Ayan, but I, I, I know that she felt it in the feels as well. It was the cutest thing ever, and I find that it's just such a wonderful way to share with people. Thank you. For me, that first bite, that bite that brings you into the moment where you're nowhere else but that yummy, awesome, either sweet or savory taste in your mouth that brings you at peace uh, with the present moment. Mindfulness, forced mindfulness, I think is the, the greatest gift that I could ever possibly offer somebody. The gift of sharing food is a beautiful thing and I'm so happy that we could make some people smile today and appreciate those moments. Hi friends. I know Kat already made strawberry and rhubarb crumble this week. We got a special delivery this weekend while we made the buns. Her dad, my uncle Wayne, came and dropped us off a bunch of rhubarb. I have decided to make jam because I want to share my jam. <laughs> that sounds weird. I want to share with people. I want to be able to send some by mail. I've been meaning to send a bunch of care packages by mail and I haven't had a chance because nothing travels very well. And there's also the fact that everything's slowed down when it comes to shipping. I wouldn't want to send something that could run the risk of going bad. Some of my coworkers that are currently spread out throughout the well, yeah, throughout the world, actually. <laughs> I was gonna say the continent, but I have people that I work with who are currently in Europe. My plan was to try and find something that I could send that is non-perishable, basically. I'm gonna make rhubarb jam. I know rhubarb typically goes very well with strawberry. Strawberry and rhubarb is a very classic combination, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. So I found a recipe by Epicurious, raspberry rhubarb jam with cardamom. And that sounds very delicious and it sounds like something I would do. So that's what I'm going to do. Fresh rhubarb, raspberries, lemon juice, sugar, and cardamom. <laughs> why, why did I forget? I already started. I cut up my rhubarb in chunks. I'm gonna make double the recipe. The yield for this recipe is two cups and I want to make several smaller jars that I can send in the mail. I have here eight cups of rhubarb. I'm going to sprinkle over that four cups of sugar and then two tablespoons of lemon juice and I'm gonna let it sit overnight for the juices from the rhubarb to escape. I don't know if this is entirely accurate. I don't know the science behind it, but I feel like if I cook that right away, it's gonna turn into compote, and that's not what I want. The recipe calls for like a tossing and turning every now and then, so I'll do that and check back in later. probably check my recipe again. I'm not sure. Okay, I checked my recipe. I was right. I did it. I didn't fuck up anything yet. Exactly that. Four cups of sugar. So it looks like a lot and that's normal. We're making jam. We're, you know, this is not a salad. Two tablespoons of, it says fresh lemon juice, but you know what? In my opinion, lemon juice is lemon juice. So I'm going to give that a little stir and then check back on it. No, oh, frig, I have so much stuff in my fridge. All the freaking time. And I live alone. Hi. Oh, you're filming? Of course I'm filming. Okay, you need to cut that out. Please. I will. Okay. All right, so I let that sit in the fridge for the past. How long ago did I pick you up? What time is it now? It is currently 7.35, okay. three hours. Uh, three, three, four hours. Cat's here, by the way. 
<laughs> the juice has started to come out of the rhubarb and the sugar's mostly like dissolved and stuff. I'm gonna let it sit, keep stirring it every now and then. I was just checking in. This is what it looked like. Looks like. This is, this is what it looks like. Nailed it. Hi. It's the next day. I let my rhubarb sit overnight. This is what it looks like now. It's very juicy. It's very syrupy. The water has mostly come out. I'm going to put it on the stove top. Wait until the sugar dissolves and then boil it down for about five minutes. And I'm going to add this much raspberries. These are frozen raspberries. It's what I have. That's what I'm going to use. I want to show you a bit of a better look of what it looks like. Very syrupy. The sugar is like mostly dissolved. There's still some like sugary paste at the bottom. We're going to dissolve all of that and then cook it down. This has been boiling for a little bit. The rhubarb is soft. It has lost most of its green color. What I'm gonna do now is add the raspberries. Oopsie, sorry. Add the raspberries and boil it down further. Also, I accidentally added some balsamic vinegar to my mixture, but that's okay. It's a good pairing. I was making a salad at the same time. I mixed in my raspberries. Because they were frozen, they do carry a lot more water. So I might need to cook it down further than the recipe calls for, but I'm gonna play it by ear, you know? It's been a few minutes. It looks thicker. It has a really nice color to it. If I let it cool down, it'll probably thicken enough for it to be spreadable. I'm gonna take this off the heat. Ooh, my spoon. And then add the cardamom and let it rest. I called my mom <laughs> because I didn't know what to do. I have no idea what I'm doing. And oh, my makeup's all fucked up. I look rough. I'm gonna pour in my jam, put the caps and the rings on, and then I'm gonna seal them by boiling them um, in my little contraption there. <laughs> jars, boiled the rims and caps, screwed them on tightly enough, boiled the filled jars, burnt myself in the process. I don't, I don't know if you can see, no, I look like a giant baby now complaining about a non-existent burn. I have nine jars here, I have seven others on the table over there, so that's a total of 16 jars. Uh, I am going to make 16 people very happy, I hope. If you see this and you received a jam jar and you're not happy, um, please tell me about it so I can never send you stuff ever again. All I have left over from all of this is this little scoopy scoop here that I'm gonna enjoy right now. Motherfucking delicious. In the meantime, ladies and gents, crooks and nannies, have fun.